Domo Amejin des. Today, lesson 19, it's not really a lesson. I'm not really teaching anything new. Um, but we have come to the point in the book that I'm following, roughly following the order of the textbook Nakama. Um, we have come to the point where they start talking about kanji and reading practice and dialogues and all this kind of stuff. So I thought that I should address that today uh, as the lesson. So we're not really learning anything new, all right? Um, I kind of want to talk about what these lessons are for, the main purpose, and then the purpose of the worksheets. So I'm not going to teach you guys kanji in the video lessons, and I'm not going to present uh, major dialogues. There are some little dialogues sometimes with the activities we do. Um, and then I'm not going to do major readings as well. Now. Uh, these video lectures that I'm doing are mainly for just presenting vocabulary and grammar and practicing those. Um, however, kanji, practicing kanji is absolutely necessary if you are studying Japanese. Um, and in this lecture, lesson 19, it's not really a lesson, I'm just going to go over some ways that um, I can help you supplement practicing kanji and you know dialogues and readings and all that other great stuff about the Japanese language outside of my uh, video lectures. Uh, and then of course my main method for the dialogues and readings is the worksheets that accompany all my video lectures. We'll go more into that later. As for kanji, you should study kanji. There's a lot of people out there who think, oh I don't have to study kanji, I can just get by with hiragana and katakana. Um, no, don't do that. Your whole life is going to be a lot easier, believe me, if you just trudge through um, as much kanji as you can and become as literate as you can be. Um, you should start as early as you possibly can. I made this mistake when I was studying Japanese. I, I feared kanji actually a lot and for a number of years I just stayed far away from it and I said, you know what, I'm only going to focus on the kanji we're supposed to know for the test. And I would eventually cram those kanji into my head and then forget them the next day. Kanji study wasn't real or serious to me at the time. It is very serious for me now. I study kanji every day. And there are a few ways you can study kanji outside of my lectures. Um, there's a bunch of resources online. The main one that I like is Wani Kani. This is, I believe, the best system out there today. I know there's a bunch of people with differing opinions, but my humble opinion is that Wani Kani is one of the best, if not the best. I use Wani Kani every single day. Um, it is web-based. The first three lessons, I believe, are free, kind of like a trial thing, and then you have to pay for the rest. There are 60 lessons and it teaches you all the general use kanji approved by the Japanese government. That's about 2,200 characters. Um, and it also teaches you the pronunciations, and it has context sentences so you can actually know the meaning and context, and it drills you. It's an SRS system. So it's very, very good, and it breaks down each kanji into its component parts. I love it. Highly recommend that one. Then you can buy books or you can buy other curriculum out there. These are three that I recommend. Remembering the kanji, this is actually when I started getting into kanji learning in the first place. This was the method that uh, I first used. You could also buy the textbook that I'm uh, using as my basis for the orders of all the lessons, Nakama the Nakama series, or really any other Japanese language series, Genki, Yokoso, uh, the From Zero series, Marugoto, uh, there's a bunch out there, right? Uh, there's Kanji From Zero, I actually made a video, a vlog video, um, critiquing, I guess critiquing, uh, doing a review on this particular Kanji learning uh, program. It is very, very good, it teaches you 240 uh, characters and then 1500 words to go with that. Um, and there's a workbook right in there. It's it's really great. You can do that, or you could just learn progressively uh, with my lectures. So as you guys know, I I don't do what a lot of other Japanese educators do. I start with kanji from the very beginning because I want you guys to get used to seeing kanji and using kanji and seeing words in their kanji that use kanji a lot. You'll notice sometimes that when I present vocabulary, of course, I have the kanji section. 
its pronunciation in hiragana or katakana, and then the English meaning. You'll notice a lot of times that character or words with uh, kanji, sometimes I don't use them with their kanji, like taite, for example. Taite has kanji, but I don't really use taite with its kanji because no one really does that. Okay, I stick to the norms of Japanese society, whether or not they use a character or a word with kanji, um, or whether or not they choose not to use that kanji. I follow, I try to follow that rule as best as I can, that norm. So, when I mean progressively study with my lectures, actually I'm going to go into more on this, on this slide. Study words, study the kanji of words that you use and see often. Okay, so like watashi meaning I, Nihon, Japan, Hito, uh, person, okay? And when you study these characters, break them down into their components, component parts and make stories to help you better memorize them, the meanings and how to pronounce them, how to get them into your head. Making stories really, really helps. Making mnemonics, mnemonics, someone commented on my pronunciation of that word recently, so I'm trying to I forget what the correct pronunciation is, but anyways, um, do what you can, okay, to get these characters into your head, and then whenever you write them out, and I highly recommend you write, have a journal, you know, make your own workbooks, something like that, write out the characters as best that you can, and uh, just memorize their component parts as well. For example, watashi, it's made up of two parts, basically, you've got this part, and you've got this part over here. In Wani Kani, it, Wani Kani also breaks them down, and so does remembering the kanji. Um, well, Wani Kani does a better job, in my opinion. Um, according to Wani Kani, I think they labeled this component as like pine, as in pine tree, and then this component as poop. <laughs> so pine, poop. I'm not sure how. I forget how they. Uh, mix those together or associated those to get the character for I um, But they have a story for it. They have a mnemonic. So you can check that out on Wani Kani. Um, you could also go to the Remembering the kanji series and see what they have for this particular character. They probably labeled the components differently than Wani Kani, but um, Everyone has their own system. You can even make up your own if you want. I recommend doing this because only it just helps you Memorize the characters much easier and faster, more efficient. In the future, okay, um, I'm not going to have, you know I have furigana, right? Uh, above all the kanji, every kanji, I try to have furigana, the pronunciation of that word or character in hiragana, okay? In little characters above, that's called furigana. Um, eventually, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of some of that furigana. Only four characters and words that you've seen a bajillion times, all right? Um, it's to help you. This is for you, so that you don't rely on that furigana as a crutch, right? Um, you're forced to remember the readings, all right, of various words, common words. And I'm not going to be absolutely ridiculous with it. I'm just going to little by little take away some. Um, and whenever I do, I'm going to announce which characters and which words I, exactly I will do this for. So, and I'm planning on taking away a batch of uh, furigana basically every 15th lesson, every time you have an assessment. After you have the assessment, boom, <laughs> I'll announce in that next video lecture, hey, getting rid of these, uh, the furigana for these characters. Unless, of course, there's some kind of exceptional reading with some character or whatever. Um, but words that you see a lot, like nichiyobi, or hi, or hito, nihon, nihongo, ego, right? All of those will probably go away after assessment two. Just letting you know. As for dialogues and readings, these are very important, okay? Dialogues are important so, you know, that you get a feel of what actual conversation is like in Japanese. And it also makes it fun if you're learning with someone. I highly recommend you get a language learning partner. You can do these dialogues together if you want. Reading practice is also important. That's good for the JLPT as well. So um, every chapter of the Nakama book, the book that I'm textbook that I'm following, roughly the order of, um, it has a dialogue, and it has a reading section. And 
what I'm going to do, basically, uh, oh, I just disclaimer, I don't have time, right, to do dialogues, full dialogues, or full reading passages in the video lectures. That's why I'm leaving it to the worksheets. Um, I'm going to put them in the worksheets, but not every worksheet is going to have a dialogue or a reading passage. Only some worksheets or some dialogues. If I see that I can make a dialogue with all with all the new grammar and vocab that you've learned up to that point, then I'll make a dialogue out of it, or I'll make a reading passage out of it. So, how do you know whether or not a worksheet is going to have a reading or a dialogue? Well, these little symbols right here. D is dialogue, R is reading. If you see one or both of those in the top of a worksheet, that means that at the end of that worksheet will be either a dialogue or a reading. Okay, and the answer sheet that corresponds to that particular worksheet will have um, extra notes about the reading or about the dialogue, as well as um, for the dialogue an English kind of English translation of what is being said, just to make sure that you are understanding everything that is being said in that dialogue. What I'm going to do right now is actually open up the Lesson 19 worksheet. Uh, this worksheet is only a dialogue and only a reading because you didn't learn anything this lesson. So let's take a look at that really quickly. So here I've opened up on my computer the Lesson 19 PDF, uh, Kanji Dialogues and Reading Practice. You'll notice the two new symbols up here. And it starts completely with a dialogue. And then the next page is a reading passage. It's only two pages. Um, what you're going to do basically is there's going to be a lot of vocabulary that you haven't been taught. And it's necessary for you to understand the dialogue. Of course, it's going to be between two people usually. Maybe there will be a three-person dialogue, I guess, eventually down the road. But for now, two people. And on the bottom here will be some comprehension questions. The reading passage is pretty standard. Um, again, there's going to be vocabulary that you weren't taught, so it's going to be right here on the right, um, roughly near the line that it appears on. That's for your convenience and, of course, comprehension questions uh, afterward. Here's also the answer key. If you don't want to see any of the answers, um, shield your eyes. I just want to point out the notes and then the English translation for the dialogue here. Um, we'll have notes like this is what they'll look like. Um, they only appear on the corresponding answers worksheet. Um, and here's the here's a note for the reading section along with the answers. And then there's going to be an extra page. There will always be an extra page uh, giving the rough English translation of the dialogue. And that's it, guys. Doing dialogues and readings are, is only beneficial for your Japanese studies. So I highly recommend you do them. I'm going to try to include them as often as I can in the worksheets whenever and wherever I can. Otherwise, that's Lesson 19. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you in a future lecture.